Hey everyone, very short video this week. Uh, we got St. Patrick's Day weekend coming up. I'm gonna be, you know, somewhere singing in a bar and probably not home until very in the small hours of Sunday night. So I don't know what I was gonna be able to put out for you. But I can tell you, we've got some really cool tubular content coming up. Uh, in fact, if you don't follow Dark Arts Lockpicking, uh, I'll put a link down there in the description. Um, I believe he's also going to do some tubular things with a, with a key cutter. Uh, it's actually a key cutter that I have been uh, looking into for a while because Hudson Lock HPC used to make it. And then, uh, the, you know, I think they still might produce it, but it's, it's very expensive. And then Wing Xing makes a copy and Kalom or Klom uh, makes a version. I think they're all almost the exact same tool. So I've got one of each of them and I'm going to side by side try to make some keys. And making keys is going to be a big focus of the tubular series. I'm gonna have a whole series probably this coming next few weeks, but uh, it's because key measurements of tubular locks are really screwy. Understanding that there are different standards of measurement, and it's partially the reason why a lot of tubular keys that you buy, they work like shit, or they don't work at all. Uh, this all started when I was ordering some FEO K1 keys, some elevator fire keys for some first responders, and they, because they told me like, hey man, we bought some of these and they don't freaking work. What's wrong with them? And I, I checked them out. I measured them and I was like, oh, these are all miscut. Here, let me point you to the right place. And I sent them over to Hooligan Keys. But uh, that's not the focus of this video. I wanted to give you something to look forward to and to think about. So this is really neat. So speaking of keying standards, who, who made, who can tell me, you know, the original tubular lock, right? The original tubular lock was, was what was, we called it what? It was the Ace Lock, right? Ace was originally made by Chicago, a Chicago Lock Company. Uh, they're not around anymore. Uh, they got absorbed by Compex, but the Chicago Ace was eventually competed by and kind of almost supplanted by Fort Lock making gem uh, lock. So Fort, uh, which is also, I think, now owned by Compex, uh, but Fort Lock and the gem standard of keying. They're, they're diff we'll get into this. We'll get into this uh, later in the weeks coming up, but this lock in particular, We've got these zero through seven values, um, which again, if you're dealing with Fort Lock or, or ACE standards, one through eight or zero through seven, well, that's not what these numbers represent. No, this is the Fort Lock Gematic. It is a pretty neat tubular lock in the sense that it comes with a whole series of keys here, right? And you've got these numbers around the dial. Well, what are, what are they about? So yeah, this key that I've got right here, it does not actually operate the tailpiece. You see nothing is, nothing is working, but I've, obviously I'm turning. Well, what is, what is, what's going on? Why do we, ha why does it come with so many spare keys? Is it because tubular keys are hard to come by and they want to give you a bunch of empty, like spare copies? Uh, if you've ever been in like the Middle East or other parts of the world where you buy a lock and it comes with like 10 keys because nobody makes copies of certain kinds of keys around the world. Well, that's not what this is. Right now, this red dot is indexed on the number zero. So if we take key zero, this is currently a working operating key. You can see I can turn the tailpiece. But if I use this control key, which again, does not operate the lock, but if I were to turn this down maybe to four, so now our little red dot is on four, I can pull the key. Well now, lock zero that we tried earlier, the key zero, that'll insert, but it won't turn. And we would need key number four, right? If we take key number four, well now that works the lock. And you can reconfigure this lock on the fly Let's put it back over here to number two, right? So now on number two, key two works that tail side, but nothing else will. How do you think, here's my question to you, how do you think this works? What's happening in here? Uh, surprisingly, link, link in the comments if you can find a good video or any kind of guide about the gematic being pulled apart and talked about. It's, there's a couple things going on that if we were to take, for example, if I take key four and five, you might be able to see something going on. If you think you know what's happening here, write down in the comments. It'll be the video I'm gonna end this whole tubular key measurements and cutting series on. Uh, we'll, we'll tear apart a dramatic because uh, I really, I wanna, I think I've got it in my head, I've got an idea or two, but you know, I'm pretty much an idiot, so I could be wrong. But you, you know, we can be idiots together. If you think you know what's happening inside of this lock, tell me. I'll even let you kind of see in here, right? We've got eight pin positions, if you haven't seen that. Yeah. And just, I'll give you one more. So right now we're at position zero, 
Uh, any of the keys, obviously they are indexed with a little bit and there's a little spline cut here. So I can only turn 90, 90 degrees. That's I'm hard limited no matter what position we're actually in. So if we come all the way around here, we're on position six, right? Again, I have to insert at the top dead center, but I can only turn 90 degrees. I'm hard limited. Think about it, post about it, and yeah, we will learn about it together in the coming weeks because I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to sharing a whole bunch of stuff about tubular picks and tubular locks and tubular key cutting. I'm also gonna share another update about the canisters. With uh, If you've been following me on Instagram, you know something's up. So yeah, they just got a whole bunch more interesting and potentially much more useful. But uh, that's again, all stories for another time after St. Patrick's Day. Uh, please, everyone out there, have a good time. Watch yourself. Don't overserve unless you're the designated driver and then, you know, Chucky e. Arla, et cetera, et cetera. Have a good time and I will see you later. But yeah, stay safe out there when you're having a bit of a creature.